And a welcome to the What is Truth radio show here on a beautiful Saturday morning in Western New York. Dr. Michael Caesar in our studio with uh, my partner in truth, John Giuseppe. Looking forward to spending the next hour with you. Uh, looking at some interesting things, John, that uh, we've uh, kicked around for a while and thought the listener might uh, find some uh, nuggets and gems in there, John. Uh, yeah, it's just... Um I, first, I just want to say, we don't know what it's going to be like on Saturday morning, brother. Well, we're, we're, pro- we're hoping <laughs> we're, it's This is nice. a pre-recorded show. Well, it's on, a beautiful we, Wednesday we, afternoon. It's beautiful on Wednesday. <laughs> so if it's raining out there and you said that, don't think we're nuts. But, um, but no, it's just, uh, it's been a, a couple of, I don't know, maybe it's my mood. You get into the swings. You know when you were young and young in the Lord yeah. and you get out there and you're full of, you know, vinegar and um, you get combative. You get combative with other religions and you get combative because you know you're right, right. And, you know, because you have the book and, and they don't. But, and maybe you're not eloquent enough to show them, but you, you had that. And then you go into a, then you mature mm-hmm. just like you do as a man sure, sure. or a woman. And you mature and you listen more than you talk and, and um, you have some compassion. And that's, and that's the spirit of Christ. And Amen. I get it. It's Amen. a wonderful thing. But every once in a while, you know, we're still men, Mike. And you talk to some people and you look at, if you look at television at all, and you do look at this nation, you look at this world, you look at your neighbors, friends, family, and you, sometimes you just want to just, you just, you get, you get what we were talking before we came on, jealous for the Lord. It's like, it's almost like if you had a, you know, a real father, let's say you had a real father mm-hmm. and people were putting him down or they were saying things yeah. that weren't, they were saying things that weren't true. And you get, wait a minute, you get, you get a little jealous. And, and I'm just getting, uh, I, I get to a point uh, every maybe six, eight months, a year where I am right now, where I'm just like, look, let's, let's lay it on the line over here. All right. All right. People, they think, you know, I'm you know, God is love. God is, and he is, he is, he is, he is. But you better be careful. They don't respect what they got. Many people think God's a patsy. Um, uh, and a, a couple of shows ago, and I, I said, I want to choose my word carefully. I said, when you pray, stop saying God, say Jesus. And I didn't mean any disrespect at all towards God, the father, mm-hmm. but that's what Jesus says. Everything goes to Jesus. The, the, Jesus prays the father. Uh, he is the mediator between God and man. Bible tells us this. God walked with man, uh, a nation in the old Testament. It was the Israelis. It didn't work out, uh, cause they were exactly the way we are. You know, they, they forsake him. If they didn't see him, you know, after generations and what, where is God? Is he really seeing us? Same things you hear today. And, and I'm just so tired of this manby pamby, uh, way of looking at God or how about the other one? Where's God in all this? Babies being uh, killed and this and that. Where's God in all this? And, you know, the same things we hear all the time and, and we get it, but we have patience and that's why we have each other as brothers and sisters in the Lord. Yeah, because we have understand. We could talk. Sure. We could talk about the rapture. Uh, we could talk about Jesus like he's sitting right across from us right over here. Sure. And I know it's hard because when I first was saved and I had brothers and sisters in the Lord for a time when they talked about the Lord, and they talked about God as if he was in the room with them kind of unnerved me a little bit. Uh, and, you know, it was just a little different. But now I get it. Sure. Yeah, I mean, Jesus is as real as looking at you as you're looking sure. at as me. Sure. And, and when you understand what's required. If you, when you understand what happened, uh, and you're out in a world that has no clue, has no clue, they get their information. Excuse me. Many, many people get their information from bad churches. Okay, we go there. But many people just get their information from whatever the idiot box tells them. Yeah. You know, and yeah. and and the, and every once in a while, you just get to this tipping point, and it says you just want to let it have it. And we were talking. It said there was Elijah. Correct. And you pointed it out to me before we started in in one in uh, first Kings 19. Yep. And in verse 10, he says, and he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars and slain thy prophets with the sword. Okay. He was mad. He was mad at his nation. They were a blessed nation. They had the oracles of God. They had it. They had it all. And, and they just, you know, out of sight, away. out of mind, yeah, just like yeah. we do now. And, you know, they got like, like, uh, like, like babies, they became very vain. Uh, they started leaning onto their own understanding. They started changing the words of God. And here you have a man of God over. He says, I'm very jealous. Yeah. And I, in my, in my simple mind, that's, 
That's example, where you are now. Yeah, yeah, it's the example I said. If you had a father that you loved and were very proud of, and sure. some people were disrespecting him and saying things that are wrong or lies, him. Yeah, or, yeah. Or, or, or you'd say, you don't even know who he is. How could you say those things? It's the same thing. Yeah. I guess you get very jealous. So I'd like to spend the time with the show and, and listener out there to make you a little uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, because what your idea of God, your idea of prayer, your idea of getting to heaven uh, could very well be wrong and it could be so wrong and the reason why it's so wrong because it's so simple scripture makes it so simple sure sure i mean you are right a lot of people do say and i think i think they're right you know you always talk about there's a golden needle in that haystack you know there's that the needle, needle. In the okay and, and they and somebody has given them the needle god is love now now my thought would be, well, where did you learn that, that God is love? I mean, you hit on a truth there, and you're correct. And it's in uh, the, the little epistle in the back of the Bible, 1 John, and it's in the uh, chapter 4, and it says, for God is love, in the 8th verse. And you, in context, you back up a little, and it tells us, because for love is of God, mm -hmm. and so love flows out of God. And then you back up one more verse in verse six, and it says, and hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. One of the things God wanted to do in his love is show us there's a right way. There's a bunch of wrong ways. Right. There is a spirit of truth. Uh, in my love, I want to give truth to you. My desire is that you wouldn't be confused. Right. I know that down there on that planet, there's like the scarecrow and the Wizard of Oz pointing in both directions, and you're not sure which way you're going to go. I want to show you the right way. And and so I, I would say to the person, now that you know God is love, look at the book that shows you God is love and learn some of the truth that God in his love has given to us. Important. And, and again, Scripture tells us we're made in his image. Uh, so we, you know, our mind always thinks me, 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 right? Because that's the way we are. Well, I'm made in his image. But reverse that. God is, you're made in God's image. So it gives you a better understanding of the emotions and desires of your father. Now, if you're, if you're a father and you have a son, right? And he has a, a group of friends and he tells you about his friends. I mean, you care for all his friends, even though you never met him. You know, hey, I was out playing with Bobby and Joe and this and that, whatever. And uh, as a father, you, you care. And if he came back and says, oh, my friend Joe, uh, father had a heart attack. You feel that, but you never met Joe, right? And then you had the friends that, that your son brought to the house. And they met you. And you connected and you enjoy them. And you really enjoy certain, you knew these friends of your son. So you're going to have, as a father, a human being father, you're going to have more of an affection for the friends that you met of your son than the friends that you just know of. You making sense? You following me here? And this is the, the Lord. Now, if you have a son, if you have a son in Jesus Christ, all right, God's son is Jesus Christ. In Jesus' way, when he starts talking about Bobby and all these people, right, the, the father's attitude is, if you love them, I love them. If you, you know them, I know them. All right. It's it's kind of the same thing. I mean, we're the same way as human beings. But of course, that's in a, in a, in a godly way, in, in a godly way. But if he doesn't know you and you're not sure he knows you and he tells you the only way to know me is through my son, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, uh, he makes it simple enough for you. And, and again, people are walking around and I just want to share some of the knit with things they say, maybe knit with things they believe in. And I'm not trying to embarrass you. Listen, you might be driving in a car and you might have your idea who or what God is. Uh, I know I did. I walked away as a young man from the Catholic Church. Not Catholic. I, wasn't, I wasn't a practicing Catholic. I, I was a blue-collar family. You got to make your, 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 your confirmation. Once you made your confirmation, your parents said, you're on your own. Do what you want to do. I did what I was supposed to do. And you did, you did what you wanted to do. But I did not know the yeah. Lord, yeah. The nor cared to. The, the confusion, uh, a woman was talking to Dr. David Jeremiah, and she said, you know, you talk about your God sends people to hell. My God would never let anyone, let alone send anyone to hell. Uh, and he said, yeah, and because your God doesn't exist. It's a God that you made up in your own mind. Eggs. It's not the God of oh, the, the Bible. Bible. Now, you it's were talking about uh, uh, being made in the image of God. 
and and that's true. Remember, God is love, and hereby know we the spirit of truth from the spirit of error. In the very first chapter, when God said, let us, that's the Holy Ghost speaking to the Son, speaking to the Father, uh, make man in our image after our likeness. And then it says, and, and the Lord God formed the man of the dust of the ground and breathed in his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living soul. And you read about the creation of uh, Adam, and then you read about how God was able to take Eve out of Adam's rib and make the female, and the two of them were made in innocence in the garden. In the image of God, they were in innocence, the image of God. God has no sin. They had no sin at that time. Mm -hmm. But sadly, something happened in the third chapter. And in the third chapter, as the Apostle Paul says, sin did enter into the world. The woman was deceived, but the man let the sin in. And then the sin entered in in the third chapter. And when you get to the fifth chapter, it says, And then Adam lived and begat a son in his own likeness after his own image and called his name Seth. And then you begin reading in the Bible, that all of us are the children of Adam now, no longer in that sinless image of God, but in a, with a fallen nature. And because of that fallen nature, uh, David would say in Psalm 51, he said, uh, I was shapen in iniquity. In sin did my mother conceive me. Not, now, his mother was out, not out in the back alley uh, having sex with, a, with someone else's husband. She had marital relationships with uh, David's father. What was his Jesse. name again? Jesse. And and it was a normal birth and a normal baby. But David had an understanding right now that that I was born with a fallen nature. And behold, a Lord, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, in the hidden part. Thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Restore unto me the joy of of salvation, uh, deliver me from the blood guiltiness, be the God of my salvation. And so there he is asking for God to essentially adopt him. And that's how we get in the family of God. Exactly. God is not the universal father of everyone, right? No, I, and, and I guess what you said last week, I mean, uh, he's not our father through creation. He's our father through salvation. Through salvation. And this is scripture. And again, we could go on and we, we, we could give you these points. And we'd love to, um, yeah. Yeah, if you, if, if you want, but proven. But it is so simple. And we hear so, so, many, so many different things. And, um, you know, the, God is, is, if you think about the original, I don't know, I stay away from that, the original sin. But think about the sin of Eve. Was it because she ate an apple? Um, was it because God said, don't eat from that tree? Yeah, but you know what it really was? She didn't trust God's word. It was unbelief, a form of unbelief. A form of unbelief. That is sin. And we always go to, Jer uh, to John 16, 9, where it says the, 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 the Holy Ghost is going to reprove the world of sin. Be Jesus says this because they believe not on me. That is sin. The sin of unbelief. Your unbelief. So if yeah. you don't believe, that's the sin. Every sin can be forgiven if you honestly, honestly and repentfully uh, give it up to God, give it up to Jesus and take Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But what cannot be forgiven is not knowing God, is not taking the time out to seek him through his son, Jesus Christ and his word. And it's, it's very, it's very important. And many times you listen, you might listen to uh, shows and we, you know, again, sometimes even in our church, people says, boy, um, if, if we go a couple of weeks here, Mike, and it's not been that uplifting, it's because the chapters we are studying are not that uplifting. I mean, when you're in the Old Testament and you see what the Jews, what well, we were talking about Jerusalem last week, uh, they, they've been destroyed twice, besieged. This, I mean, you know, 80 times, 70 times. I mean, that's not fun to hear about, but that's what happened because they turned their back on God. And, you know, too much that is given, much is required. They were the, they were the Jews. They had the oracles of God. And he came down pretty hard on them because... Again, I mean, that's, that's his treasure. Those are his children right there and that, that he chose, and they're being disobedient. But if you think God is, uh, is only love, and, and, and we've gone here before, you go to Proverbs 1, right in Proverbs 1, this is God. He says, he says over here, he says, How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. And then he says right over here, Turn you at my reproof. 
Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Can you imagine God is almost begging us as a father to tell a son to come home? And then he, yeah, beseeching yeah, us to come to him. He's, this is love. Yeah. This is love. Yeah. And if you go to him in love, he'll love you back. But this is love. He's given out love, but you could only love, you can only love somebody one way. You got to come in and tell him you love him and give him a hug. I mean, people aren't going to love, and you come over here and he goes, now listen to this. This is the God I point out to people because most people just think God is some patsy, right? And he goes, because I have called and you refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regardeth, but you have not at all my counsel. You have none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, I'm going to laugh at you. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they hated knowledge, and they did not choose the fear of the Lord. They did not choose to respect me. I'm not a patsy. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Counsel, he's not saying none of my commandments. He, said, he does, but he says my counsel. As a father counsels us a, a, a son or a daughter. And this is the best counseling you could get. This is not man's counseling, God's counseling. I'm counseling you, but you don't want anything of it. You don't even want to know about it. He said, therefore, they who, you, will eat of the fruit of your own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple will slay them. He's putting people in two categories here. And the prosperity of fools will destroy them. But... Whoso hearkening unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear and evil. Now, you could read that, that, that chapter over and over, mm -hmm. and you could say, okay, he wants, and you could take your face value. But what, you, what you're seeing over here, if you look at the emotion as an intent, what would it be? I mean, those of you that are, that are a father or a mother and have a child, you know, don't you have that, that, that string? Don't you have that understanding of a child when they that you want to bring them in, you want to give them understanding, and they're out there in the world, and they're doing their own thing, but you want them to come, come in, you want to counsel them, but they'll have none of your counsel? Have you not gone through that? Well, this is what the father's going through. And that's why he's given everything to his son. He gave everything to his son. He says, you take care of it, all right? You can only speak to me through my son in this New Testament. People don't understand that. First thing you do is fall in the water. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay, he ain't listening. Yeah, God, God um, again, I was uh, taught uh, as a young person, and it's, I think it's pretty much taught uh, universally through all quote-unquote Christian churches. So that would be anything you find in the yellow pages that lists itself as quote-unquote Christian, from Assembly of God in A all the way to Zionist churches and Z and the Catholic and the C and the Mormon and the M. I mean, all of them. And they pretty much teach what's known as the uh, fatherhood of God, that, that we're all God's children, the yellow, black, and white. Everyone is the child of God. But Paul and uh, the Apostle Paul was given a revelation from Jesus Christ to give to the Gentiles. Now, John has been reading books by Jewish authors to Jewish readers uh, in 1000 BC and 500 BC, and when God was dealing with the Jews, which were his adopted nation. But to the rest of us who are Gentiles, God is not our father, although he found a way to become our father. And it says in the book of Ephesians, one of the uh, great epistles, it says, uh, blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according as he hath, verse 5, predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, where he hath made us, the adopted ones, accepted in the beloved. And God said, I I'm going to make a process a you, we've been cut off. I'm not your father anymore. In the garden, I was Adam's father. It says in Luke chapter 3, right? The last mm -hmm. verse of the third chapter. Adam was a son of God in God's image. The desire was Adam and Eve would have children in God's image, not in their own image. Once they were in that fallen image, they're now the children of Adam. You and I are born 
as the children of Adam. We're, we're not the children of God by our first birth. We're not the children of God by the creative process that gave us life on this planet. You know, the sperm hitting the egg and then the whole thing that goes on inside the womb. That birth doesn't make us the child of God. It makes us a child of Adam, a child of this world, a child of the present earth with an earthly life that's only going to be so long. But God predestined a way for us. He, he said, I'm going to make a way. And if people do it, their destiny is set. If you get on that plane that says L.A., bound for L.A. from Buffalo, it's getting off at L.A. You get on this, you're going to be my child adopted by my son, Jesus Christ, and you must be adopted into the family by being. of God through Jesus Christ. Uh, Paul wrote in another epistle, Galatians uh, 3.26, ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. And, and the law was our schoolmaster. All of the things we've learned, uh, whether it be the Ten Commandments, whether it be the things we learned in the civil law to be a good person, to bring us unto Christ, that we may be justified and justly adopted by faith. And you become the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. Prove that you love me. Prove that you love me. Right? You heard the Old Testament. Um when um, Abraham took his son Isaac up and God said, sacrifice a child to me. Prove that you love me. Let me see how much you love me. All right. And God did tempt this man to do this. And he said, I'll never do that again. And Abraham was going to do it. And he stopped him. He says, wow, you were going to give your son for me. You prove that you love me. All right. This is New Testament times. God has made it a lot easier. These, you know, the, again, he's not going to ask you to do that. You want to prove that you love me? Love my son, because like Abraham. But I want to reverse that. That's a good okay. illustration. And that the Lord was uh, at this point trying this man, Abraham, with whom he'd had a relationship for decades and decades and decades. And Abraham would build altars and Abraham would call on the name of the Lord. And Abraham would tell his family, I'm a man of faith. I'm a man of God. I want to live God's way. And God was guiding him. And then and then God gave him this incredible test to uh uh, take with now, a son he loved very, very take much. Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains. And he's he's trying his faith, and, and Abraham rises up early in the morning and he saddles the ass, and there they go, and, and it takes him three days to get to the mountain, and he takes the wood for the offering, and, and uh, he's up there. And, and when it's time for the sacrifice, he stretches forth his hand, he takes the knife, and then the angel of the Lord, and this just wasn't some angel, this is the Lord, an angel can mean an appearance, and God appeared for a moment to him and said, Abraham, Abraham, lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do anything to him, for now I know thou fearest and, and lovest me, because thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son. And that, that was a, a test, an example and, and in looking at uh, and Abraham's love toward God, now reverse it. That's right. Reverse it. That's right. And God says, allow me to prove my love for you. That's right. I'm going to let my son go. By the way, it was the same mountain. It was same, Mount Moriah. Mount Moriah. Mount it was Moriah. the same mountain in, in Jerusalem. About Abraham didn't later, know. So. Yeah, 1,800 years later. Yeah. And that same hill, Jesus carried that cross up that hill, got up there, laid out on that cross. They nailed his hands and feet. And God, instead of saving his son, said, I want to show my love toward you and that I'm going to give my son so that you can have the salvation that you cannot earn. Let's just back up just a little bit. Now, these are great points. Now, understand, when, Ab when, when Abraham was going to sacrifice, um, when God told him to sacrifice Isaac, there was a sacrifice. It, because if they used to sacrifice bulls and goats and sure. lambs because, because something had to pay. <clears throat> God said, if you sin, you shall die. And we all know Adam and Eve didn't die physically. They died spiritually. All right? So man being a sinner... The the Jews, well, Abraham at the time, before he was a Hebrew, he, they used to sacrifice to the Lord. So now, because of sin. Well, the Lord showed them when they right. did sin, by the way, that day. Um, they not only died spiritually that day, they would have died uh, physically by 12 o'clock midnight. They would have died that day physically. And God stayed their execution by getting a substitute in the third chapter, and he 
killed a lamb lamb. so that they could live. And he clothed them with the skins of the lamb to show them the way you're going to be saved one day is the blood of a lamb and his righteous robe. And you can say, why is God so, so bent on this, that something has to die? Well, he's God. You see, over time, over time, we, you know, we're not afraid of sin anymore. We sin constantly. It's no big deal. You know why? Because we sin and we don't go outside. And we, we don't get spanked. We don't get hurt. So, so we sin. So sin is not, it doesn't, it's not, but to God, to God, sin, which is not trusting him and doing it your own way. And if you, if something, something has to die. All right. Wow. Why? Because you die physically, you die spiritually. So death for death, eye for eye, right? Now, Abraham was sacrificing his son, he had to be thinking in his mind for sins, just like all the other lambs and goats that he, that he sacrificed before. He was, God told him to sacrifice. If God tells you to sacrifice, go sacrifice something. It's because of your sin. And Abraham was going to appease God for not only his sins, but the sins of his people and his family by sacrificing Isaac. And as Pastor Mike just said, he stopped them. And God was impressed but you see, it's the same thing that that's what God did. He said, and, and, and he, God was so impressed that Abraham would do that. He says, wow, you really proved your love for me. Now God said, I'm going to prove my love for you because sin is serious business, whether you think so or not. And something has to die for your sin, for your spiritual death. And the best thing that could, that could appease all mankind is my blood, the blood that runs through my son. And God sacrifice his son to pay for our sins and we don't react like god did we're not in awe we need to be in awe and say oh my god you sacrifice your son for me is that love or what but yet can you imagine you sacrifice you give up something that you love and then you don't even care about it? Yeah, that, And you that, expect God to love you? That, that very verse that we were saying early, many people will say God is love. And you'll find that in the back of your Bible, a little epistle. It's called 1 John. And you go to chapter 4, and that eighth verse says, for God is love. And then in the ne- very next verse, it says, and in this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten son into the world, that we might live through him here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation, the full payment for our sins. And we regard and so, it not. Yeah. And we don't regard it. Yeah. We don't, we don't regard it for everyone from China to Russia. It doesn't matter. Okay. And we just don't regard it. Yeah. And we think that God should love us. And God has loved us and still will love us and wants to adopt us through his son. So uh, thank you for joining us on the What is Truth Pro. Uh, Visit our uh, site, www.graceandtruthchurch.org, and we'll return after this short message on What is Truth. Amen. And welcome back to the What is Truth show, the final half hour here on uh, on Saturday morning in Western New York. uh, John D. Giuseppe. Dr. Michael Caesar or Pastor Michael Caesar or just Brother Mike, as they call me here at church, sitting around discussing some concepts. They're good concepts. Like you said, John, many people will tell us God is love and and he is. And we learn that in the Bible. And so I say, now that you've got that verse from the Bible in first John chapter four, verse eight, read some of the verses around it. Right. Just read the chapter and learn how God has manifested this love uh, toward us. I mean, he loved us before we loved him. He manifested it by sending that son of his. He so loved the world. He said, son, go down into that world and do that sacrifice on Moriah that Abraham wanted to do, but I wouldn't let him do because the sacrifice of his son couldn't have saved the world. Because, and I think, and I think yeah. God would say, because, you know, and again, in layman's terms, I think God said to Jesus, I was so blown away that Abraham loved me so much that he would just take his only son because I, because I said him to do that. So can you imagine how the world will come to me and love me when I give my son, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. Sure. Sure. Okay? sure. When I, if I give my son the Prince of peace, sure. The, the, the one that has my blood running through his veins, what the world and you know, God's got to be appalled. He, what do you mean? I, I gave gave my son so now you got a problem over here listener all right 
like, you know, God is, is love. You know, for the most part, I can say I love everybody. I mean, until I'm provoked, I'm a man, you know, a human. But I have no problem with anybody until I'm provoked, right? Well, I think God's that way. And he's provoked by you not wanting to know him, that you not, want, not, want, not wanting to acknowledge what he did for us, the grace that he so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son for us. And his son had to take this hit. And it's not regarded. So you got a real problem now, all well, right? You well, need to know. I mean, I, I got this verse over here, and I, and I point sure. this out to people, Mike, in Proverbs um, 8, 17. I love them that love me. And he goes on to say, those that seek me early shall find me. But listen to this. Why would God say, I love them that love me? Why is it necessary to say that? If you Now, let's say, let's say, take it down, take it out of the Bible, put it at your dinner table. Now, if your father said, to you, you know, I love them that love me. Basically, the next thing you say, and I don't love them that don't love me. Why would it, it's, it's not said, but it's implied. Why would you say, I love them that love me? I guess you're saying, I don't recognize them that don't love me. And you show your love for God through his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus says, if you believe on me, you believe on him who sent me. If you love me, you love him who sent me. I love them that love me. Why, God? Because I don't love them who don't love me. Amen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the Lord does uh, speak. He, he talks about uh, being balanced at one point, writing about his son, whom, of course, God loves very much. His preeminent love would be toward his son, uh, the, Jesus Christ, who who did all things that pleased him so many times at the heavens open and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And it said at one point when he's getting ready to give his son the throne in the book of Hebrews, and it says um, in Hebrews chapter one, unto the son, he saith, this is God saying to his son, thy throne, O God, telling Jesus, you know, I know you know your God, but I'm writing it down in the scriptures. You are the God man. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. I mean, when you sit in that throne, you're always going to rule right. You're never going to be partial. You're not going to take bribes. Everything you do is going to be righteous and according to the law of God. And then he says in the next verse, because thou, his son, loved righteousness and hated iniquity. And so, yeah, there are what things is iniquity, that, brother? Uh, that's a, a willful scorning type of a sin. It's not an accidental sin. I mean, uh, for example, uh, looking at, uh, uh, let's say, a child in your home and, and they're growing up and the first time you give them a glass of milk and they go to handle it and, and it slips out of their hand and they spill the milk. It's an accidental sin. You're not going to get angry for that. But let's say you, you put the glass in front of them and you say to them, now, you're not to have that milk until we all sit down for dinner and I've set the table real nice. So wait till grandma and grandpa get, get here and they look you right in the eye and they go like this, boop, and they pop it over and just knock it down, looking you right in the eye, a willful, <laughs> there's a big difference between accidental sin and, and willful scorning sin. In my and, house, <laughs> you get tanned, you get your backside burned doing that. And don't you? And so, so again, it's a great, that's a great example. And it's, and it, so again, you, willfully scorning guard i i always go my to um i think of um luke 13 24 when 23 when one said to him lord jesus christ um are there few that be saved and he said to them strive to enter in at the straight gate for many i say unto you will seek to enter in and shall not yes. be able once the master of the house is risen up and hath shut the door and you begin to stand without and knock on the door saying lord lord and again this is a, kind of like um an example, and son, right? Mm -hmm. Lord, Lord, open the door unto us, and he shall answer and say to you, I know you not whence you are. He's, what he's saying is, I, know, I don't know who you are. But listen to this. Then they begin to say, we have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. I mean, we were with you. We, were, we, le we listened to you. And he said, I tell you, I know you not whence you are. Depart from me. So... You workers, of you work, iniquity. you workers of iniquity, because because again, you you might know who Jesus Christ is. You might think you're pretty good, and, and you need to know that He knows you. 
all right? Yeah, you know why? I, you know, I went to church. I went to catechism. Um, you know, uh, you know, I, I went. I do. I do this, the 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 Christmas Day thing. I went with my friend one time to a Bible study. I was at. You know, I went and helped at a soup kitchen one time. I never hurt anybody. Uh, I think Jesus is a good guy. I don't really understand him. How how about that? You hear that? I don't really understand him, but I think he's a good guy. And if he's the son of God, I'm good with that. Guys, ladies, that does not work when it comes to your life in eternity you best be very specific you best make sure that the lord knows who you stand for it's very easy it's not a it's not a hundred a hundred uh, point test question test it's very 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 easy and if you don't take the time to sit down and i know when i got saved i i can't tell you the day I could tell you the week in 2003, it was after Christmas, it was that week I was reading and I had time on my hands because in the business I was in, that was a slow time. So I was reading, I just, I couldn't get enough. And I remember looking up and saying, God, we're good, right? I mean, I started learning all these things and I said, wow, I didn't know this and all. And then I started negotiating with God. What a fool. And I, I was like, we're good, right? I mean, if you need me, if you need me to get on my knees, I'm mean, no big deal. And as I'm saying this, I'm slithering down off my chair on my knees. I was, it, it, when I looked at it, I was fighting it to the point of being broken and humbled. But I said, if you, you know, if I have to get on my knees to make sure you know that you are my Lord and Savior, I'm going to do it. And you know what? Like you always say, I know that I know that I know I'm saved. I know that I know that I know I'm going to heaven because they're based on the promises of God. And it's very simple. You take the son, you take him. I, you know, if, if Jesus Christ doesn't know I love him, all right, by now, I mean, I don't, I don't know what, what else to do. I mean, and of course, I'm just being, he knows. And you got to make sure if, you th if you're there and you're driving your car right now and you say, no. Yeah, I learned about Jesus and I was I love Jesus. Good man. Yeah, he was the son of God. Yeah. You're going to be one of these people who says, hey, I ate with you. I drank with you. I listened to you preach. But you didn't know me. That and, you don't want to and, hear that. And, and the knowledge that, again, he's talking about is like the Apostle Paul uh, wrote in that epistle to the Ephesians. And that is a knowledge whereby you know that you are a member of the family of God through the adoption by Jesus Christ that God predestined as the only way he would allow the fallen members of the human race to come back into his family is by being adopted by Jesus Christ and they become accepted in the beloved. Of course, that would be the beloved son, Jesus Christ. They're accepted in him. Like when I wanted to go to medical school, I need I needed that a letter of acceptance. Of course, I had to earn my letter of acceptance, but Jesus has earned your acceptance through his work on the cross uh, because in Jesus, verse 7, we have redemption through his blood. To redeem is to pay for something to bring it back, and, and Jesus paid for your sin so he can bring you back into the family of God that we were once in back in the Garden of Eden but are no longer in since Adam fell. And that redemption gives us the forgiveness of sin in verse 7, and it's all according to the riches of God's grace, his grace. He wants to graciously forgive your sin wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence and made known to us the mystery of his will. What's the mystery of his will? Of uh, verse 12, that we should be to the praise of his glory because we first trusted in Christ. That's where he wants our first trust to be in, in Jesus Christ, not in the church, not in our baptism, not in, in the sacraments. I mean, when I was a little boy, uh, my original trust was, I didn't even know I was, when I was baptized, I was so young, all I did was cry, and uh, I think it was Uncle Rudy and Aunt Anna were the ones that were my godparents, so to speak. I didn't know. I was seven weeks old. I didn't know what happened. When I got a little older, at five years old, they told me, now you're getting ready to make that first communion. And then my trust was, okay, I'm making this communion, and I'm going to be a good boy. And my trust was in the priests and the church and, and me 
keeping those sacraments. And then he said, no, no, I want your first trust to be in my son. I don't want you to trust in the church. We got a nice church here. Mm -hmm. We don't trust in this little church. No. We got an okay pastor. The guy's all right. He's not that good looking. (laughs) We don't trust in him. We trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. How does it happen? Verse 13, in whom you trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. And so somebody has to come and tell you the way to get saved is by believing the good news that Jesus Christ did all the work that, that he died for your sins, uh, that, that he was buried, but he rose again the third day and he conquered death and he conquered sin and he's the first fruit of the resurrection and he'll resurrect you if you die one day. And many Christians have died through the centuries. But what do we know? The promise that one day we're going to hear the trumpet sound and all those people who died in Christ will be raised mm-hmm. again, just like Jesus Christ. And what do you do when you hear that gospel? Then you believe, it says in verse 13. And then when you believe in verse 13, it says, and then God will seal you with the Holy Spirit of promise. And then you'll be adopted. And then Ernest. Paul and then Paul says, in the uh, book of Romans in the eighth chapter, whereby we receive the spirit of adoption and we cry, Abba, Father. And the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are truly the children of God. Something I didn't so know before. We are. And and, and again, uh, get criticized for this, but again, stop praying to God and pray to Jesus. Jesus says, I and the Father are one. All right. I'm not discounting God by any stretch of the imagination. God has put the scripture tells us God has given everything to the son. I don't know what scripture that is, but he says uh, everything. The yeah, father has given all, things to, all things to the son. Right. And Jesus says in John 14, six, he goes, I am the way. He didn't say God is the way, but he and God are one. He says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the father, but by me, but by me. Yep. You understand what's going on over here? He took the God sent it down. He took the hit. God is like, okay, they're all yours. Do what you got to do. Get your church in order. Get your house in order. Then you're gonna come back, and then we're gonna come. But then we're gonna come back. But right now, I mean, I it sounds it sounds so cold, but and I've told people that it, that that I'm saying, saying Lord, change your inner prayer to, to to Jesus, not to God. God has been. I, I apologize, Lord, for this. Unfortunately, it's been so watered down, especially in our country. God bless America. We don't care. We got we got heathens singing God bless America. Okay? And 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 people again, people fall into, you know, the, the, the car sliding on the on the skyway in a December day. And you're like, oh God, oh God, oh God. And if you say, God bless you, people they don't even they don't even look up. But if you say they say, Praise Jesus. You know, but, you know, people just stop. Interesting, you would they just stop. notice that um, you, you say that God. Uh, people often say God bless you. Actually, mostly what I hear is just bless you. Right. I, I listen carefully, and when, and when people sneeze, they go bless you. They don't. They don't even say God anymore. But but pulling back, I was reading a theology book by one of the the better theologians, uh, Geisler and. Uh, I can't remember the other author, but they were talking about the fact, Charles Ryrie and, and those two authors, and they were talking about the fact that as you, you study through the Bible, you will see these uh, various terms in the Bible. And the first one is, is God. It's just a noun, and it refers to the supreme being, the, the creator, so to speak. But then as you read your Bible, even in the beginning, you know, and God created this and God created the, the birds and God created the sun, moon and the stars and, and God created the man. But then later on, when they actually get into the relationship in the garden, you see the word Lord for the first time. Mm-hmm. And the Lord called unto Adam and the Lord God walked in the garden in the cool of the day with Adam and Eve. And you read and, and Lord is another term that's more personal. It's more of a family term. Term. Lord. Uh, and, and you can almost tell those that are in the family versus those that are outside the family, those that have the relationship versus those that don't, those that don't use the term God. Uh-huh. Uh, I use the term Lord. 
and later on he said in the last part of the chapter and then the the term father comes in and then jesus said you can pray our father which art in heaven and but but often when i hear someone sneeze i'll say lord bless you because i'm close to the lord jesus right. i'm close to god right. the father and the lord jesus well, in, in our society especially in america because we're everybody i'm okay you're okay and everything's political correctness um you know they say there is the god of islam and the god of of uh of, you know the chinese god and this god or the gods or the baseball gods everything's god 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 and they've what they've done what satan has done he's watered down god's name but man when you say jesus say it in the room it's say it in the room say say you know i was praying to god the other day watch people's reaction you know i said a prayer to god the other day and people are like oh you really what'd you say then 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 go to the next group and say you know i said a prayer to jesus the other day watch them look watch them kind of it kicks against the pricks you say sure, that name, sure. you say that name, Jesus, because that is the name that Satan flees. That is the name above all names. That is the name that gives you your ticket to eternal life. So understand these things. When you pray, know to pray to Jesus. Don't, don't bank on God as love. Jesus loves everybody. All those that come to me. What does that mean? What's implied? If they say all those that come to me, what's implied? There are all those that, that don't come, come to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, all those that come to me, you're, I'm going to give you this. But what's implying is all those that don't come to me, I'm not going to give you this. All they that love me, I love them that love me. What's it imply? I don't love them that love me. Get it, get, get, get it through your head, listener. I'm sorry to say it, but we didn't write the book. But the book is written, it's spiritual, and it's simple. It's called The Simplicity of Christ. Very deep that a loving God would send his son because sin matters to God. It might not matter to you and I, but sin matters to God. It, it hurts him as much as today as it did 6,000 years ago. And it matters. And he gave his son. And you don't care. You know, I'm, I'm again. You were just saying a few moments ago not to uh, trust in the love of God, so to speak, or trust in the phrase "God is love." That I think the confusion may come in the fact that God, uh, love to God, was a motivating and a moving force for him for him then to do something, and the actual engineering involved in him working salvation. It says a God. Uh, let me see if I get it right. For his great love, wherein he loved us, whereby he raised us up in Christ Jesus, that he might show the riches of his grace through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved, not by love, but the love Amen. moved God to send Jesus who was full of grace. And by grace are you saved through faith. And you've got to believe in the coming and the work and the ministry and the death, burial and resurrection of God's son. By grace are you saved through faith. That's you believing it. And, and that salvation is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. And it's not of works lest anyone should, any man should boast. God wants you to be thankful for everything his son did on your behalf and, and the fact that God in a great love for you was willing to send his son and the son was willing to make the sacrifice and the love was the moving force, but the work and ministry was, and the salvation was done by Jesus Christ and the grace comes by Christ and we got to believe that. All right. And you want to know what love is? Uh, not to segue too far off this but listen you don't know what love is if you got a king james bible again i went to another wedding and i loathe i loathe first corinthians 13 when it's not out of a king james bible yeah all right the love by the love the marriage chapter as you guys like to call it or love do you know originally god is so god is <laughs> jesus is they're just so the depth of their love and their wisdom is is phenomenal in that chapter, it's not the word love, it's charity. Everywhere that, that man changed it to love, it's charity. 
And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profit me nothing. Charity suffereth long, and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It is not puffed up. Charity, 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 charity. And you all change it to love, 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 love. Okay? Well, it is kind of the same, but I did a, a, I did a, a preaching one time. If you got a box of love, a box of love, and you opened it up, what would be in it? What would be in it? Kisses? Sugar bears? No, charity. Real love is charity. This is God's wisdom over here. He teaches you. Real love is charity. And what is charity? Charity is not only given to the United Way. Charity is giving of yourself, giving of your time, giving of your money. And in the case of our God and Jesus Christ, giving of your life. That's love. Even the it's word, the charity. even that English word is so beautiful because, you know, look at it, write it down on a piece of paper, uh, listener, there'll be a C, an H, an R, an I, a T. Look at all of the letters it shares with the name Christ. I mean, it shares a whole bunch of letters with the name Christ because charity is God's love through Christ. That's that's his desire to reach out to you. He he gave the best that he had, which was his son. Uh, somebody said years ago, um, you can give uh, without loving, and it's true. I mean, I remember I worked at this one place. They they made us give to the United Way, and I didn't like it at all. I, I didn't particularly want to give to the United Way, but they took it out of our paychecks. It was something that happened there. We finally fixed that situation after a year. But you can give without loving. Uh, sometimes you're going into a, a store around Christmas time and someone's ringing the bell out there in a Santa and you just are embarrassed and, okay, you throw a dollar in and you really didn't even want to do it, but you gave without loving to really put it in that basket, right. but you did it anyways. But you can't love without giving. And God so loved, he gave the best that he had. Do you get it, listener? Do you get it? Yeah. When you say God is love, it's, it's, this is charity. We're on, let me tell you something, we're on the clock. We're on the clock. It's never been so clear that the coming of our Lord is, is right around the corner. And it's guess what? nigh, yep. The coming, of our, the coming of our Lord for you could be right now. You might take the wrong left turn and get in an accident. You might have a widow make a heart attack. I'm not trying to scare you. Okay, but when the game ends, the game ends. This is serious stuff over here. And if you're looking for God's love, you will only, you will only find it through Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the word, capital W in John, that's the word is Jesus Christ. And the word was God. The word was with God. Nothing was made that he made everything. He Jesus made these things. He made you. He made us. When you look at that baby. And you say, that's love. I mean, I look at that little, little warm baby. I said, that's love. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. That's charity to you that you are brought into this world and you are able to, to, to commune with a woman, to two become one in, in a marriage and create another human being, another tabernacle for, for, for Jesus to send down a soul. Quick story. I had a uh, uh, one time I was telling you, Mike, a woman called up, she gave me a hard time, and she said, what about St. Jude's? What about St. Jude's, if God's so loving? I said, well, that's a pretty beautiful place. I mean, that, she goes, no, I mean, there's kids dying there. There's kids dying there. I mean, you know, where's this loving God? What about these kids that are being trafficked in, and, and uh, you hear these kids being molested? And she went on and on. I said, I said we're going to go there, right? So God, you know, is love, and that's what I'm trying to tell you. But I said, no, cancer was cured. She goes, what? I said, cancer was cured years ago. Nobody dies of cancer. What are you talking? And she got really frustrated with me. I said, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. The person that Jesus sent down into this earth to cure cancer, we aborted him. Yeah. We aborted. The good Samaritan that was going to intervene when that little girl was being raped, we aborted him. Millions and millions and millions and millions of souls throughout the world for years have been aborted. You mean to tell me that every one of those souls was a slug? You mean to tell me that every one of those souls were going to wind up in jail or doing some kind of harm like Charles Manson? Nobel Prize winners you, 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 in you medicine. Tell, God works. You yep. pray and God works through people. You mean to tell me when you go and look at your creator and you got a problem with God because of all the problems in the world, you're not going to like what you hear. Where was that good Samaritan? Yeah, we killed him. 
Where was that cure of cancer? You killed him. Yeah. Right? And, Where was that 400 and, hitter? You killed him. And, and, God, and God does work through people and work through men and women. And here is a great truth. Uh, God's desire and will is to have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And there is one God and there's one mediator between God and men. And that's the man, Christ Jesus. He, he decided to work through the God man to bring us back. And he gave himself a ransom for all. And uh, our job is to just uh, get on the knees and thank the Lord for the salvation work of his son, because God showed his love 2000 years ago, uh, more than Abraham. And he let his child die so that you might have life. And God is love, and he's manifested his love to us. Will you receive that love gift? He Mike? would like you to do that. Just, just all you got to do simply How? is just uh, invite, uh, like I did one day in my uh, kitchen on my knees in front of the radio. I said, Lord, I realize I have sinned. I am a sinner. Be merciful to me and allow Jesus to be my Savior. Amen. And at that moment, I was adopted into the family of God. The spirit of adoption came in me. I was sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, and I'm heaven-bound, and that same gift is there for you. So and thank you for joining us on the What is True And you'll program. experience God's love. Oh, it's a blessing. You'll Once you do it that, firsthand. you will experience God's love. Yeah, welcome to the family. What a blessing. We'll be with you again next week, uh, Saturday at 7.30, right here on WECK. And until we're with you, take some time. Open the Bible, read the Gospel of John, search the scriptures, and you'll know what is true. Amen.